I think the biggest challenges that, that government faces is uh, are uh, really trust issues, um, first around the people that they're working with, and then the information itself. And uh, the way around that um, really is first uh, application uh, fostering, because um, the applications are coming up from people creating them that they don't know uh, in a place where they could disappear at any point in time. So by doing application fostering with, say, creating uh, memorandums of understanding with uh, organizations like Google or Amazon who are used to hosting uh, web-based applications, uh, over the long term, there's less of a chance of these crowdsourced applications from disappearing quickly uh, during a disaster or even shortly after where they need it for the disaster response. Um, other cases are just the people, relationship management. So crowdsourcing often brings a whole host of people who want to help during a disaster response uh, situation and they can't be on the ground. Um, uh, the government, uh, government agencies already have relationships with uh, uh, NGOs like the American Red Cross who are used to training volunteers to help in situations like that. But in many cases, um, people don't have the ability to be on the ground with the Red Cross. So in cases like this, why, do, you know, why doesn't the government actually work with the Red Cross to have the volunteer coordinators um, defer, or not defer per se, but recommend that um, these, these volunteers uh, look to organizations like VOST, um, which is a crowdsourcing uh, group. Or better yet, um, why not perhaps introduce um, crowdsourcing training into the American Red Cross. So in addition to, <clears throat> excuse me, in addition to intro to um, mass care or intro to uh, shelter ops, why not have some things that we already know about crowdsourcing like intro to GIS or intro to crowdsource volunteering to the Red Cross. And uh, so those I think are some of the, the main issues that need to be addressed uh, to help the comfort level of government agencies with regards to better security uh, around uh, uh, the crowdsourcing and social media issues. I think the things to, to be thinking about primarily is, uh, again, from a, from a policy perspective and just it, there are standards that already exist, FIPS, um, uh, for a, a security compliance perspective. Make sure that your FIPS compliant. And if you're FIPS compliant and already going in there, there are ways of, of making sure you're already secure to go out and work with um, the crowdsourcing applications, whether it be creating a virtualized environment, uh, a virtualized space to work with these crowdsourcing applications to create a buffer, or uh, working with the liaison NGOs to kind of vet some of this data before you take it in and uh, kind of work with it. So in a disaster environment, there's a need for uh, data to happen fast. And government agencies, many of these government agencies, I think, are, uh, gr not, uh, are eager to get this information in a timely manner, but at the same time, they're hesitant to take it in and have it be incorrect or factually wrong. Uh, but uh, you know, they don't want it to, <clears throat> they don't want to expose themselves to security vulnerabilities. Uh, and so as long as the technology wise, they maintain the FIPS compliance, uh, you know, I think they have the chance of, of kind of bridging the, you know, uh, any potential breaches through that, as well as working with, you know, people wise and, and uh, even information wise, bridging the gap through the, uh, the relationships with the NGOs. Mm -hmm.